Hello, welcome to Nine It's Charge and welcome to another instalment of The Two Dannies, where we just sit and just, these are just the normal chats that we have on the phone or in person or down the pub. We just thought, why not save them and make a video on them? <laughs> Over a breakfast. We haven't done that for a while. We need to do a breakfast to Dannies, I reckon. Yeah, I think it's because it was your turn to buy breakfast is why we haven't done that in a while. Shh. <laughs> but i can't afford it because i'm trying to keep up with games workshop release schedule <laughs> we're gonna have to eat eat the bits of sprue that we haven't made into models yeah exactly that's gonna have to be it okay all right so today we're gonna ask ourselves is there anything that we wish we had known before we got into the hobby oh my days <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much <laughs> I think the first one is something that we touched on in the last episode of the two Dannies is actually it's a bit like I can remember I was watching I think it was something on the news or something in a documentary it was about these monks and I think they live in China and they've got this puzzle that they're making and in the middle of their temple there's a courtyard and they're building this puzzle and at their current rate of building it it will be completed in about 400 years time. And every day they come and do a bit of the puzzle. This is what it's like being a war gamer. You must just accept, you've got to be completely Zen like the monks and you just have to accept that you will build some models and you will paint some models. You will never, they will never be finished in your lifetime completely. You won't complete the hobby. <laughs> um, I think that's number one on my list of things I wish I'd known before I started. Airbrush is probably... Airbrushes existed was probably one. Although that I guess that was right at the beginning of the hobby. I'd like to know that, not necessarily before I'd started. Um, mm. I think I'd have liked to have known the meaning of financial control. <laughs> 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 because and I, I say that in jest but but also in truth because actually and i guess it's a hobby and and it's it is really hard to to measure it but i think i've made a lot of purchases that have really added to my hobby and i've enjoyed during my time as a hobbyist but i've also made arguably more purchases that have not added or have almost put pressure on because of the cost of them or because they sit in a corner not getting done and you feel like you should do them mm. um and it's really difficult because you do like particularly me i sort of butterfly around um and convince myself that stuff can be painted in like seconds that cannot nothing can be painted in a second but, but i definitely like you know, the amount of armies, things, products, stuff I've bought and then ultimately got rid of. It, yeah. It's, I mean, I'm I'm in a much better place now where I, because I had a big, big clear out and I'm a little bit more reasonable <laughs> than I have been in the past. Although I fear the upcoming Imperial Guard release may cripple me because I'm very excited. <laughs> um but yeah, just, I think sleep on it is probably, <laughs> I should have known, you know, rather than just going in and buying stuff, that'd be good. A good one. You tend to get very carried away though. Something, or I mean, I can remember phoning you up when you were at work, you were in the office and I think you were just tearing your office apart going, oh, there's a corn release. There's a corn release. Goodness knows what they, what they must've thought outside the office with the door closed. I'm not, like you do get very, really enthusiastic and emotional about things when they, when they come out. And then I suppose, yeah, you're right. If you, if you had slept on it, you might've thought a bit better of it, but in the moment you've just, you've just got a click, haven't you? I suppose. Yeah. Or charge down to your local store, but. I think another thing that I would have liked to have known, and it, it is different now, I suppose. If I was getting into the hobby now, I before there were painting guides and things in White Dwarf and on, on the, the boxes of models you bought, but it kind of always used to be 
spray your model black or white, whatever color you want to spray it, add a couple colors. And then the next step is here's a heavy metal finished paint job. <laughs> but <Yeah>. now <laughs> there's a lot of, um, you know, people showing you how to paint. And I think getting those, getting those key brush skills, right. I think painting is like handwriting. You know, when you start off, you don't, you know, once you've got your brush control down and you're happy that you can do an edge highlight, I, I watched myself paint now almost in disbelief. Um, compared to what I was like, you know, years ago, where I just I'm get them on and kind of just in disbelief, but for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna Are we gonna talk about that um, that gloss paint? Is this what we're talking about? No, no, but that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Things I'd have liked to have known. The paint I was waiting for to dry was a gloss. <laughs> 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 yeah um yeah to the point where i was getting the hair dryer out but why isn't this drying what is yeah yeah that um is, uh, would like to know. henry and colt paint did a really good chat about the painting guide thing because they were lucky enough to have mike mcveigh on who sort of headlined the beginning of proper painting guides and the difference now with the internet and youtube etc etc is massive um mass massively different um because yeah. one of the things i think is really interesting now is there is such a range of products that can make your painting easier and in fairness citadel now do a lot of them but not all of mm. them um yeah you know, enamels is one for me like i was always terrified like enamels to me were like some kind of voodoo magic um <laughs> that you just didn't touch for for games workshop miniatures and actually there's some really good stuff you can do with them hmm. so so that's good i think another one is finding like-minded people in the hobby is really important um we've all had those games and those matchups where we play people who are just completely at the opposite end of what what we're about um you know and i've been on both ends of that i suppose where i've I've played someone who, when I thought something was a casual event where someone was really gamey, and I've gone to an event wanting to kind of do well in the event and played someone who's kind of brand new, um, and it's and it can be tough. But I think the other thing is going to events and meeting players. I think I still don't think we do enough of that really. Um, we do go to the odd event, but we don't we don't go enough. But I think there are a lot of there are a lot of hobbyists out there, especially these days, and. And I think when you find a group that's like-minded, then everything kind of just falls into place a bit. Like we were saying in the previous one about the Games Workshop release schedule, you know, you can you can you can get drawn into it, or you can buy the things that will benefit you know your hobby, and you know who you're going to play, and you go to your games group, and and then that that really helps a lot. Um, the last one from me, um, things that we'd wish we'd known. Well, I'm going to say this on your behalf, Dan. Um, at Warhammer World, if you buy a box of miniatures and then you go to Bugman's Bar and have a pint, you're not allowed to assemble them in Bugman's Bar. And that is something that you'd wish you'd known, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, I wouldn't have bought them. <laughs> if I bought them with the view, I would sit in Bugman's and build them. What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> don't even, it's hard to know what to say. I think the final one from me is uh, I'd have liked to have known and therefore purchased many Games Workshop shares. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or hold, or like you said, things I've bought and thrown away. Well, hold on to them because down the line they won't make them anymore and then eBay will come a call in. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what they admit. All right, um, that's it for this week. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you enjoy the chat, make sure you click like. If you want to see more from the two Dannys, please subscribe, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.